Okay, hey guys, welcome to lesson three of uh, unit two, uh, combina combinations and comparing combinations and permutations. Uh, this is um, the first time we're going to actually see combinations, and uh, so we've got this uh, this folded paper theme again, and we're, we're going to stick to it with for the rest of the unit, um, even though we we maybe have some mixed feelings about it. But I kind of like the quadrants that you can you can put stuff in, so I'm going to use that for this unit. Okay. Uh, here's like a kind of a nice warm up that that you should spend some time on. Um, it really helps to like actually do this yourself, just to write them out. Um, top three from five finalists in a competition where it must be chosen. It can be a competition for anything, um, but you've got a top three. How many ways can this happen if it mattered who is first, second, and third? Usually it matters who's first, second, and third. Um, but I thought we'd try this question because it really has to be um, – because for the second one, you're going to say, how many ways if, if only the top three was picked, not ranked? So we really just care that there's, there's a top three. So um, it was kind of in a nice world where the top three, everyone gets the same prize and – doesn't matter who's first. You just have you just have three winners, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, and so, like, you I want you to actually try to write those out. Uh, you can just write out the numbers one to five, and um, uh, it might be a little confusing to use the numbers one to five. You could write the letters A, A to E. Uh, you could just write out five names, and then just use their first names. Um, and so, I want to I want you to actually take some time to write those and answer the question. Which is bigger and by how much? Uh, and we're, we're not so much going to care about like the number bigger. We're going to, we, we usually in this case, we always care about like the factor that you're bigger. So in this lesson, we're going to do two learning targets, uh, combinations, just really introducing the idea of combinations. And combinations is a, is a tool to calculate the number of ways that we can arrange objects or items in a group in which no roles are assigned order does not matter. Uh, so we actually saw that first thing, it, like when, when we don't have what the, what the order, uh, it's just three, then, and then that's a combination. And we're going to compare permutations and combinations so you know that a, how combination is related to permutations. If I know the number of permutations of objects, I can easily calculate the number of combinations of the objects. That's key. Uh, if you can do that, um, That'll really help because we've actually been kind of comfortable calculating permutations. So now the question is just how do you calculate a combination? And so hopefully after this, you, you'll know based on the permutation, you can get the combination relatively easily. Um, if I know the number of combinations of objects, I can easily calculate the number of permutations. So you can go back and forth. So what is a combination? If we're picking a group of objects from a larger group and the order does not matter, we use combinations. If we had to take the best three of five finalists, we say five choose three, and we write five C3, kind of not surprising because the other permutations was five P3. But we also have a kind of a, a notation that I tend to use a lot. Um, I'll probably use it less just because with like the PowerPoint, it's easier to write five C3. And uh, I just kind of noticed that students prefer that. Um, but the notation that you could see a lot is is five choose three. It's like a five and a five over a three in brackets. Uh, this can be a little bit confusing because um, you don't have le like because it kind of looks like a fraction, but it's not a fraction at all. Uh, there's no line between them, and uh, so you can often see this if, if you're looking at combinations. Um, we'll often like be comfortable just seeing both both forms. Remember that whenever we learn math, like we're not the only ones learning it. People learn this all over the world, and they'll they'll write it in both forms, and and so it's it's helpful to be comfortable with both. And the answer is ten. I hope like as you wrote out all those combinations, uh, there is ten top threes. Um, if you got more than ten, you're you're, you're counting something twice. So you might have counted person one and person three on the team uh, with person two twice, just in a different order. Or you might have 
if you didn't get 10, then you might have missed some cases. Uh, if you didn't write them out, I encourage you to still try to write them out. Like it's it's really helpful to see them written out. Um, 5P3 is actually going to be 5 times 4 times 3. And I wouldn't expect you to write those out because that is uh, 60 cases. Um, here's a video comparing combinations and permutations. This is a really good video to watch. I'm not going to watch it here. I'm going to let you guys watch it. Um, so, but like, uh, so if you want to like kind of pause this video and move into that one, um, it, it really is a good video to watch because it does, um, as you can just see here, like it does uh, group the permutations to become a combination. You can see here, um, here's the uh, the six permutations of two of three objects. Uh, if you take three objects and, and arrange two of them, but you can see that there's only really three groups. A, C, C, A comes up once, but it only counts as one in a combination. Uh, calculating combinations, this is the key slide. Like if there's one slide you want to copy out or print out or whatever, this is the key slide. So I just want to go through this carefully. Uh, to calculate the number of combinations of three objects from five, it is helpful to understand the following. Uh, so if you actually want to get that calculation 10 without actually having to write them out, it's really helpful to understand the following. If we arrange each group of three, we get the permutation. Um, 5 times 4 times 3 is 60. Um, for each group each um, each group of three, um, there, are, there are three factorial ways to arrange them. So if you imagine that you had a group of three people and you wanted to arrange them, uh, you'd have to like, there's three slots for the first one, second, two slots for the second one, one slot for the first one. So if you had a group of just three people, there's three factorial ways to arrange them. If you multiply the number of groups of three, that's the number of combinations, um, by three factorial. So in other words, you arrange each group of three, you get the permutation. Um, read through those three things very carefully. Uh, if you arrange the group, of, the number of groups, uh, if you arrange every one of those groups, uh, and that's three factorial ways, we get the permutation. We know the permutation. It's 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 five times four times three, which is sixty. To get the combination, we we kind of use this idea. Um, the groups of three, five choose three, which is the number of groups of three, multiplied by three factorial will get you the permutation. Understanding that you don't know how many groups of three you have, but you know how many permutations you have. So if you know how many permutations you have, and you know that you're going to multiply the groups by three factorial, you can get how many groups you have which is the combination, five choose three. If we rearrange that formula, you can imagine what we're gonna do. We just use algebra, divide both sides by three factorial. Um, we're gonna divide 60 by six and we get 10. And that's the key to actually calculating a combination. If you understand that if you take the permutation, divide it by six, divide it by three factorial, you get the combination. Um, I honestly prefer to think of it this way. Um, taking the number of groups, if you arrange each group, like if there's, so there's 10 groups, and you arrange each group, 10 groups of three, and, and each one of them can be arranged three factorial ways, then we get the permutation. Okay? So I'd, I'd think through that slide a couple times. Yeah, you probably want to run through that for different different combinations you calculate. Combinations in general, the number of ways to choose R objects from N total objects. So the number of groups of R you get from N is NCR, which is the permutation NPR, divided by R factorial, which is the number of ways to arrange each group. Bring the formula with only factorials. Um, Right, this way, you can imagine why we're gonna we're gonna use a fraction. Whenever I, whenever we like divide fractions, I like to like write them beside each other. Uh, this is the exact same thing. It's just the division sign is is on the right. Um, 
we're going to replace NPR with the formula we had before, N factorial over N minus R factorial. Uh, divided by R factorial. Here's the, uh, the the quadrants here. I got that little break in the folded paper to go over here. Um, the same thing. We're just going to multiply it by one over R factorial. Remember, dividing by dividing fractions like it, it's helpful to flip and multiply. Uh, so we get N factorial over N minus R factorial R factorial. Honestly, I prefer this. Um, like you don't necessarily have to go to this at all. Um, it's definitely nicer to go to this. Be very comfortable with permutations, and that's how you can calculate. There is a cal there is a button in your calculator that will do NCR uh, if you have a good calculator. Um, if not, you're gonna, you're gonna have to use factorials. An example: uh, a soup is made from selecting from ten different ingredients. How many soups can be made that contain four or five or six ingredients? You will be shocked at the answer. I told my wife this that look at how many soups you can make, honey, with all these like just four or five or six ingredients from ten. Um, this is a multiple cases uh, question. It is a rule of sum. We're gonna have to say like case one. We've got four ingredients. And then here's the quadrants. Nice. We got case two over here and case three here. Uh, so first one's four ingredients. Ten choose four. That's all you have to do is out of the ten ingredients, you're choosing four of them. If you took ten P four, you get fifty forty. If you divide that by four factorial, you get two ten. If you have five ingredients, same thing. You got ten C five. If you have the permutation, you get thirty two forty. Divided by five factorial, you get two fifty two. If you wanted six ingredients, you got 10 choose six. It's not very challenging, right? Like you've just got three cases. Um, take the permutation divided by six factorial, you get 210. The total, if you add them all up, you get a whopping 672 different soups. It's kind of exciting. Um, maybe not want to eat all those soups. Maybe like some of the some of these four ingredients aren't very good together. I once mixed cinnamon with some kind of sauce. My wife thought I was crazy. And I think I was. I was like, hey, why wouldn't cinnamon taste good? And it was disgusting. Like We had to throw it out. <laughs> uh, practice for today. We've got uh, a bunch of questions there. Some of them are very quick. R1 obviously is a good like um, describing question. It makes you think about what you're doing here, like the number of ways. Um, and uh, I, I mean, like, there's quite a few, but some of them are very quick. And I added these two. If you knew how many roles to arrange a team of R from N people, in which there are no roles in order, did not matter. So a combination. How could you figure out how to arrange them if there were roles in order did matter? So how could you get the permutation? Uh, write out or research ten rows of Pascal's triangle. Like, it might be helpful to actually write them. If you don't want to, you can you can just Google uh, Pascal's triangle, and you can Google image search will get you, I think, a 13-row triangle almost right away. And analyze the answers on in the example on the previous side. So I want you to actually go back and look at these answers after you look at the first 10 rows of Pascal's triangle. By the way, 10 rows means row 10 is like the one that starts with 110. Um, row 9 is 1, 9, so the first kind of guy doesn't count as a row. It counts as row 0. Okay, that's everything for today. Have a great day.